Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I am Mick Alphany. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I would greatly appreciate that. And if you could, please click that like button, turn it into a rocket, and send it to the moon. Listen, the banks are in trouble. <laughs> uh, now, I don't know if you heard, but over the summer and a little bit into the fall, a lot of the banks were having outages. Okay, They were suffering um, technological problems. And so a lot of their customers couldn't get money out of the banks. This was happening all over the world. Now, some of them just had a technological issue and then some of the banks were getting attacked by certain entities. We'll just say that, right? And so that was causing a myriad of problems. It was shutting down systems and people could not get their money, at least to dissatisfied customers. And that damages people's lives. The banks are in trouble. Um, they've needed infrastructure upgrades for a long time. How does that affect you and I? As, I? as I stated before, long before they had those outages, I told everyone they need these cryptocurrency rails. They need this new blockchain system. Why? Okay, so when a part of a blockchain goes down, the rest of it can continue to function. Perfectly fine. Everything just continues to roll and there is no true effect on the rest of the system. A few notes can go down, a few computers can go down, and the, the system continues to just move on as if, as if nothing ever happened. The banking system doesn't function that way. T uh, typically, when one aspect of, of it suffers, the entire uh, entirety of it suffers. That is very bad. I don't know about you, but when I want my money, I want it right now. So this is one reason why, after experiencing that, there was a mad dash by a lot, of, a lot of the banks to work on central bank digital currencies. This is why you saw in around September, that, that end of August to the beginning of September period, there were so many announcements of now, now this central bank or this commercial bank wants to work on a digital currency. That's why, because they, they ex, the experience of having systems down and not being able to conduct business, it hurting their, their, uh, they're bringing in of capital, right? Uh, it hurting their relationship with customers because then customers are probably, a lot of them probably went to other banks that didn't have the outages. It forced them to acknowledge they need to move to a new system, which would be the CBDC system. This happened with the New Zealand bank. In New Zealand, uh, I believe, I don't know if it was, I think it's the New Zealand Central Bank. They suffered one of those outages. And so after they suffered that outage and there were so many customers dissatisfied, then they announced in September that they were going to move forward and take it serious as far as working on a central bank digital currency because the blockchain system, as far as the banking coins, the, the banking softwares, just think of it as software, don't think of it as coins. They have a system where it's very secure. One aspect of it can go down one aspect of it could be being attacked. It would not affect the rest of the system. That's why they need it. Okay, so. So we have this little blurb here from investopedia.com and it says, the most common cause of bank failure occurs when the value of the bank's assets falls to below the market value of the bank's liabilities, which are the bank's obligations to creditors and depositors. This might happen because the bank loses too much on its investments. This is another reason. <laughs> I don't even wanna go into that. There's channels that specialize into that, but I know a lot of you know what I'm talking about. The banks are in trouble. They need this new system. And, um, Yes, they're going to try to fight back. They're going to try to clone DLT technologies. As you saw with one of the projects, it takes like, was it three hours or something like that for settlement? That's cute. XRP, three to five seconds. XLM, three to five seconds. They haven't caught up yet. And that doesn't negate all of the different intermediaries, the high, high, uh, um, the high fees charged by intermediaries. And then also, it doesn't negate the fact that their uh, particular CBDCs would be back, backed by bank accounts. The same, uh, there's so many problems with that. There's so many problems with that. I mean, but we'll get into that another time. It's backed by bank accounts. Come on, 
come on. <laughs> Half the time, the bank doesn't even have enough money if you wanted to remove all your money all at once. If everybody came there all at once, that bank doesn't even have enough money for all the bank accounts to remove the money that they have. Because they don't have on hand money. A lot, of their, a lot of the money that you put into those bank accounts is being used for a myriad of other things. So it's constantly out, more so than it's coming in. Right. This is why they've been losing so much money over the years. Right. And this is why when there's bank runs, like when the redacted happened, right, the banks had to close their doors. They had to shut down because they literally didn't have the money for you. But you're going to back your currency based upon bank accounts. And this was from a document I read on one of the large institutions. I'm not going to say their name. Uh, and I'm just like, see, and this is why DeFi, why the Bank of International Settlements is so hot on DeFi, right? It's not that they're against DeFi. They're looking to, uh, for a way to uh, control DeFi, regulate it, okay? Um, do something with it because they understand more people in the future are going to use DeFi and act as their own banks. And that's going to affect their power. That's going to affect their, their, uh, their bottom line. The capital that they're able to bring in it's going to affect a lot of things because people are losing trust in the banks they're losing trust in the banks you have a savings account and it's paying you this tiny tiny little uh, annual percentage yield and then you go to something like usdc that pays you like one percent apy or whatever percentage they're doing at usdc or you go to valor app that's paying you what 50 percent annual percentage yield you have some some crypto uh exchanges and and, and um, <laughs> some some crypto companies and foundations that are paying you in, in an exorbitant annual percentage yield. So then the future, the, the people in the future would probably, if they're logical, consider storing their money in something like that where they're going to see a significant return as opposed to a savings account where you just, your money just sitting there dead, sometimes even losing value. The banks are in trouble. The banks are in trouble. And that is muy linda for you and I who are holding literally pieces of the new system. Most people don't understand that. They don't get that at all. You're holding pieces of the new system. Don't think of them as coins. Sure, you want to think of um, Doge as a coin? That's cool. It's just a store of value. Bitcoin, it's just a store of value. No problem. It's just a coin. But when you're talking about XLM, XRP, HBAR, Algorand, Cello, listen, you are holding advanced technology <laughs> that is needed in the world to either replace a system that's failing or be integrated with that system to keep it alive. Alive. That's how serious this is. No matter how long it takes, they're going to need to upgrade some way, shape or form. As I stated before, this is why these companies like Stellar Foundation, Ripple, a a Hedera, they must, Algorand, they must. It is extremely important for them to continue to innovate. Stay ahead of the legacy system so you cannot be replaced, so you cannot be usurped. They will usurp the throne if they can. But if these companies can stay ahead of the legacy system, they will always be needed they will always be the ones. There is no one. There are the ones. They are a collective. They're, they're not in competition. They are all on one accord. They together are the new financial system. Just how all the central banks and supervisory bodies are not against each other. The IMF is working with the BIS. The BIS is working with the IMF. You see uh, Augustus Karst Karstens constantly on conference meetings with uh, Georgieva, from the IMF. You see Christine Lagarde of the European Central Bank constantly on meetings with the IMF and, and the BIS. They're all working together. So why, I don't understand why it's difficult for the people in the crypto community to see Stellar, Ripple, HBAR, Hedera, Algorand as those new bodies, those new powerful supervisory bodies. I don't understand. And, and them working together, not as competitors, but as complements to each other, the same way that the current supervisory bodies are doing. But I mean, some people, I guess they just don't want to see that. That's, that's up to them. What can I do? 
Uh, but that's the way I view it. And there is more than enough money to go around, more than enough money. I just went over the numbers of the top 50 banks. IBM claims they have 44 of the top 50. I mean, I'm going to assume that that's true because they don't want the liability of telling a lie to some of their most powerful clients who are going to sign up based upon those that wording. So I'm going to assume it's true. Uh, but just looking at the the, the capital, the, U, the, the capital in U.S. dollars that they have, <laughs> there's more than enough money to go around. Now, here's the thing. The capital that they have in, in U.S. dollars, in U.S. dollar amounts, right, is completely dwarfed by the asset in U, the assets they hold in U.S. dollars, which is mind blowing, mind blowing. The future is extremely bright, extremely bright. I tell you, if I died, I literally would resurrect. If that stuff went parabolic, I died beforehand. I would resurrect just to open up my, my uh, cold wallet and count all that money. Death couldn't stop me from counting the money. It's, the, it's there's so much money at stake. This future is so bright. You need three pairs of sunglasses to protect your eyes from how much it will shine. That's the potentiality we're dealing with. Look at the numbers. I keep saying this. Look at the numbers. So, hey, I can't tell you what to do. I'm not here to tell you what to do, but I'm just sharing my humble, humble opinion. Humble opinion. Just look at the numbers, right? So the future is very bright, but the banks are in trouble. Mizuho, this is from channelnewsasia.com. Channelnewsasia.com. Mizuho Financial Group's main banking arm reported a new system glitch on Thursday, causing a halt to some money transactions. Those people can't be happy not being able to get their money. The banking system needs help. They need help. This is where the new financial system is going to come into play. Let's take a look here. This is from injuredly.com. 24 million dissatisfied customers in recent weeks, New Zealand has not been the only country with severe disruptions to its banking system. Other countries include the United Kingdom, Japan, South Africa, Venezuela, and Mexico. Keep in mind, this is apart from certain things that can happen that they're testing for, right? That could shut down the world economies. This is apart from that. They need a new system that can't be taken down. They need a new system that can't be stopped. If a part of it, it goes down, it doesn't affect the rest of it. Everything can continue to run smoothly as though, as though nothing happened. They need the new system. If one node is being attacked, if one node shuts down, has a malfunction, it doesn't affect everything else. They need this. And you know what? It makes more sense with an MCBDC or an MBDC because with, let's say you roll up XLM, XRP, and HBAR for its contracts, its smart contract aspect. Listen, it would be a, a near perfect system. It wouldn't even, it, it, like a problem for that type of MBDC wouldn't even feel like a road, like a bump in the road. It wouldn't even feel like that at all. You wouldn't feel it at all. It wouldn't affect the system at all. So yes, they're going to need the new system. So, <laughs> Future is looking very bright. I'm very excited about it. I just wanted to bring you that. Um, so now that you have that information, what are you going to do with it? I know what I'm going to do with it. So until next time, let's get to the money.